Hello, this is Mr. Sasaki, and I'm going to do uh, a little demonstration of some um, acid and base uh, chemistry with an indicator that is a purple substance um, or blue, grape colored, made out of red cabbage. So uh, here's the red cabbage juice in question, right here. I made it last night out of a red cabbage that I cut up and boiled and looks like a pretty good grape juice. So there you go, there's the red cabbage juice. And uh, we're going to try a few things here today. So remember that an acid uh, is considered to be a chemical that uh, when you dissolve it gives off hydrogen ions or H plus ions um, and causes an increase in their concentration and anything that causes a decrease in their concentration uh, is already kind of a concentration of them in water and if anything makes them go lower then it's considered a base. So we're going to start with an acid called hydrochloric acid uh, which is chlorine and hydrogen attached together and so the hydrogen will dissolve off in the water uh, to become that H plus ion and when we take our hydrochloric acid clear and colorless, and when we add a little bit of the cabbage juice, it becomes bright red. Okay, so let's put that guy into this test tube here. See how red that is? This would be a very low pH. Okay, that's our hydrochloric acid. Now, I'm actually going to try one that's a little bit stronger. That is um, hydrochloric acid at a one molar concentration, so one mole per liter. And here is the same concentration of sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, which has two protons to give away. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that in here. And this is very strong stuff, stronger than hydrochloric acid. And then I put a little bit of indicator here. There we go. So, very bright red from this very purple colored liquid. Now, next, uh, we're going to take the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, by the way, if we just had regular water, uh, which is what this is in, actually, uh, let's just get a little bit of plain water. Okay. So plain water should be pretty much just that same purple, but lighter, okay? Paler, there we go. So that's the middle of the, of the pH scale. So we have this bright red for sulfuric acid, a little bit less for hydrochloric acid. In the middle, we have this nice sort of pale um, red cabbage color. And now let's do the opposite end of the spectrum and see what we get with a little sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH, that's sodium, and A and OH, which is um, hydroxide, and the OH's part of it, hydroxide, uh, will attract H pluses and cause them to react and make more water, which is going to decrease the amount of H pluses, protons, in the water. And so it makes it less acidic. And on the other hand, it makes it more basic, which is equally um, can be equally corrosive as acids can be. So, let's just try that out here. We're going to take some of our indicator and see what color we get. Ooh! Bright green color. So we go from bright red to yellowish green on the high pH. 
basic side. Interesting. So, now, just for kicks, so that would be this end of the spectrum. So now we're starting to get a picture of what the whole pH scale looks like from very bright red at the 1 or 0 level, moving on through to red, and it's going to convert over to, uh, to sort of the, the purple, and then over to a green at the 14 level. This isn't necessarily a 14 solution, but it's, it's going to be basic, quite basic. So if this was a pH scale right here, it goes from 0 to 14, and so the middle would be 7, right around there. This would be around the 1 or 2 end, or 0, 1, or 2, all the way up to 14. Okay? And so actually, you could start to begin to tell what the pH of something is by adding this indicator, which is what an indicator does, uh, to tell you how acidic or basic it is. And if you think about when people do uh, pool testing, and check the pH in their pool. That's what they do. They put a sample of water, they add some kind of indicator to it, um, and figure out what color it went to find out if it's too acidic or too basic. All right. So let's just for kicks find out what happens when we uh, go from the opposite end of the spectrum. So here. Okay, so we've got our We've got our yellowish green, and if we take the far end of this spectrum here, we've got our red. Fix them. Uh huh. And look at that. They started. They turned a purple color, so they actually went right to the middle here. Now, when this reaction happens, it it may start out at one pH, and then as you mix it in. They, um, they kind of end up, you know, on one end or the other. So let's see. This one sort of started out, moved to the words of the middle, and then kind of went back out this way. So how much acid would it take for us to get it back into this middle and then even start turning it over? So when you add a little bit of acid, it's going to make it more purple again. That's a kind of a cool thing. It's not mixing right now. See, it's floating. The acid is kind of floating on top, and the base is on the bottom. So I'm going to get a little stopper in here near the mix. So there we go. We've got our green on top, which is a little bit more acidic. When I mix it all in, though, it ends up back towards this end here. Now, our sulfuric acid is very acidic. So if we add some of that in here, now I'm getting a little bit deep, so I'm going to pour some of this off into this one here, just to make room. Okay, so we've got our sort of neutral here. And then if we start adding in some sulfuric acid, and just for good measure, I'm going to put a bit more indicator in to make sure we're we haven't lost our ability to tell what color we are. Okay. Now. So it should be still be roughly the same color as it was before, just maybe a little more intense because we put more indicator in. And now let's swing it back over. A little bit more H2SO4, more sulfuric acid, and it gets dark pretty quickly. Because again, this is a very strong acid. And it's edging back over to this way. I'm moving it back full back over into the red zone, which is more acidic. Now it may be that if I mix this in. stays kind of in the green area, but eventually if I add enough of it, it will move back over towards the red, 
um, as we in increase the acidity. Okay, and that's called a neutralization. When we add, when we take a base, something from one end, and we add it to an acid on the other, and they meet in the middle because those H's on this side and the lack of H's over here balance each other out, and we end up back in the middle here in the water area or the neutral area. And what's left on the other side is what's called a salt. Okay, which is just the other parts of whatever your acid and base were. So if it was sodium hydroxide and uh, hydrochloric acid, well, the chlorine is the part of the hydrochloric acid that isn't hydrogen. So you'll have your chlorine and sodium hydroxide. The part that isn't hydroxide is the sodium. So the sodium and the chlorine come together, and the salt that you get is NaCl or sodium chloride, which is what we call salt normally. But the salt can really can be anything. It's whatever leftovers you have. Thank you.